Hello friends. In this video, we'll take a look at a very useful sensor that can easily protect you from problems associated with such an unpleasant event as a water leak. The hero of our review can not only alert you about this, but also serve as a trigger for automations that can shut off the water using electric valves or actuators for regular taps. Even if you don't have those, it's better to get a message from the sensor at the start of the leak rather than from angry neighbors below when the water has already seeped to them. Speaking from personal experience, as these devices, which I've been using for several years, have saved me more than once. In the description, you will find links to my other videos where I talk about similar sensors, water shutoff systems, and examples of automations. Before we start, as usual, I ask you to like this video. It will help others who are interested in smart home topics find it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so before. Device Type Leak Detection Sensor Manufacturer MOS Interface Zigbee Operating Temperature Range From minus 10 to 55 degrees Celsius Size Diameter 50 Thickness 17 millimeters Battery CR2032, autonomous operation not less than a year. Base ecosystem, Tuya Smart, Smart Life. The device comes in a small box, designed in the familiar style of Mose. This is one of the many times tested manufacturers for the Tuya Smart ecosystem, and I have many reviews of their devices on my channel. In the box, besides the sensor itself, there were only three small instructions in English, German, and Spanish. The CR2032 battery was included, so there's no need to buy anything additional. The sensor is ready for installation right out of the box. This is a classic floor sensor in a monoblock casing. There are also models with a separate sensor on a wire, which are more convenient for use in hard-to-reach places. On top, there is a rubberized button. Holding it down activates pairing mode, and a green LED starts flashing under the button. The battery compartment is located at the bottom, protected from moisture by a screw-on cap. Before the first use, you need to remove the safety insert, install the battery, and close it using a coin or something flat. Directions for opening and closing are indicated on the cap. Right there are two stainless steel contacts, which, in case of a leak, close the circuit with water. As seen in this photo, they do not touch the floor. The sensor rests on the central part where the battery compartment is. The contacts will only close if the water level rises to them, preventing false triggers, such as on a freshly mopped floor. Here it is compared to similar sensors, Acura on the left and Blitzwolf on the right. As I said, this is the classic model, the most common type. It's time to move on to the logical part of the review and start testing compatibility with the default control system, Tuya Smart. As with any other Zigbee device, a gateway is needed for the sensor. I use the wired version with HomeKit support, the link to the review is in the description. We start the gateway in the mode to connect new devices, then press and hold the central button on the sensor until a green LED starts flashing under it. After some time, the sensor is recognized and connected to the system. Since our hero of the review is an emergency sensor, the system initiates a notification testing process, which involves checking whether the Tuya Smart app is an auto start and whether it is running in the background. Only in this case will notifications always be triggered. The main window of the plugin displays the current status at the top, which shows no leaks under normal conditions. Below that, there are several options, a log of activations showing the date and time of status changes, followed by a list of automations in which this sensor will be used. In the device settings, there is the battery charge level, notifications for leak detection, and low charge level. Separately, there are paid options for sending SMS and phone calls. The general settings only include basic options, shared access, desktop output, firmware checks. There is no information on compatibility with other systems, but we will test it. Testing the sensor's response when the screen is off. Since the Tuya Smart app runs in the background, the notification of leak detection arrives. The response speed in the app. Oh.
Overall, provided there is a stable internet connection, this is a fully functional notification tool. If you have a water control system, the sensor will have time to shut off the taps in time. It is recommended to connect the sensor and the taps or actuators to the same gateway, then the automation will work even without the internet. In automations, the sensor can only act as a trigger. The trigger event can be set based on the status change, either there is a leak or not, and also based on the battery level, more, less, or equal. Now let's start checking compatibility with other smart home management systems. We'll begin with Google Home, where you need to connect your Tuya account once through the menu of devices compatible with the service. After that, all compatible devices will automatically appear here. The sensor did not appear, so there really is no compatibility. To test compatibility with HomeKit, I am using the Home Assistant integration called HomeKit Controller, which essentially emulates the operation of Apple's Smart Home Control Center. Here is the gateway to which this sensor is connected. Although compatibility was not announced, the sensor appeared in the device list. This means that it will work with the original Apple application as well. Two objects were detected here, a binary leak sensor and an identification button, which, incidentally, does not work. However, the sensor works excellently and instantly reacts to the sensor contacts closing. I should clarify that in this case, data exchange occurs locally and does not depend on the internet access channel. Let's also check the standard Home Assistant two-year integration. Unlike the just-discussed HomeKit, it depends on the internet with data exchange through the cloud. The sensor also appeared in this integration. However, from a reliability perspective, in this case, it is better to use the HomeKit controller. I should note, all that I have shown up to this point, the Tuya Smart App and these two Home Assistant integrations are working simultaneously. There are also two objects here. However, instead of a useless identification button, there is a battery level sensor. It can be said that these two integrations complement each other. HomeKit covers the leak sensor status and from Tuya, you can monitor the battery condition. If the internet connection is stable, the response to a leak will also be instantaneous. But if you are using a gateway with HomeKit support, it is better to prefer the local protocol. Now we move on to testing the sensor with other Zigbee coordinators, for which it needs to be removed from the gateway. Let's start with the Smart Home Control Center, Sunoff iHost. The link to the review is in the description. The current firmware version at the time of testing is 1.13.7. I initiate the mode to connect new devices on the iHost, and by holding the button, I put the sensor into pairing mode. After some time, it connects and appears in the system. It was identified correctly, even the leak sensor icon is displayed on the tile. The current status is displayed right on the tile, with nothing on the device tab. The sensor triggers on leak detection, and the response is immediate. I remind you that iHost works without internet connection and uses its own Zigbee coordinator. Sensor Settings tab. Here are only the standard options such as location, link to automations, device, and manufacturer identifiers. In automations, it can act as a trigger for two status change events, detection and absence of a leak. iHost is connected to Google Nest through Matter, which allows it to push most of its devices to Google Home. However, the sensor is not included and does not appear in the system in this way. Let's return to Home Assistant, but now we'll use integrations working with alternative Zigbee coordinators. We'll start with ZHA and a USB Zigbee stick with SkyConnect firmware. The link to the review is in the description. The connection process is standard. The sensor needs to be manually put into pairing mode each time. Here, four objects were identified, three of which we have seen before, binary leak sensor, battery level, and identification button, plus a firmware check. It reacts instantly to leaks and, of course, does not depend on the internet. In the description under the video, I left a link to one of my lessons from the telemetry series about emergency notifications from leak and smoke detectors. Just to clarify, the hero of our review, like other similar battery power devices, is an end device, meaning it spends most of the time in sleep mode. And we will conclude the compatibility check on Zigbee 2 MQTT. The current version at the time of testing is 1.36.1. I am using a Zigstar network coordinator on the CC2652P2 module. The sensor connected correctly, there is no need for using external converters. Naturally, it also appears here as an end device. 
The image matched is from the version with an external sensor, but this does not affect functionality. Here, five objects were identified, a binary leak sensor, another binary sensor that will trigger at a low battery level, approximately at 10%, a digital battery level value, tamper, which is practically not present here, and signal quality level. The leak sensor triggers instantly here as well, without reliance on the internet or clouds. All these sensors also appear in Home Assistant, except for the signal quality level, which is by default deactivated if the last response parameter from the device in Zigbee 2 MQTT is also deactivated. Sensor activation, which can be used as a trigger in automations, for notifications as well as for certain actions, depending on what devices you have in the system. The sensor made a good impression, well made, responds adequately and quickly to leaks, and is supported in HomeKit, Sunoff iHost, ZHA, and Zigbee 2 MQTT. Time will tell how long the battery will last. That's all. I hope you found the video helpful and interesting. I would appreciate your likes as it helps promote it on YouTube. If you don't want to miss new reviews and lessons, subscribe to my channel. In the description under the video, you will find links to stores where you can buy this sensor, to my other lessons and reviews related to this topic. There are also links to my Telegram channel, Facebook page, and a group for smart home discussion. Join us, it will be interesting. Thank you for watching, until next time, peace to all.